Okay, let's talk about organic matter. Organic matter is all of the carbon-based material, living things and dead things in the soil, things that are totally rotted down, could be roots living and dead, it could be uh, living and dead microbes and small critters that live in your soil, and humus. Humus is the completely rotted down woody debris that exists in your soil that it can't be broken down any further. That's what gives soil a, a nice smell and a dark color and good texture. Humus has a lots of nooks and crannies that hold nutrients and they could be positive or negatively charged nutrients. So when you have a uh, good organic matter level, and usually we shoot for at least 5% or better, uh, that increases your cation exchange capacity. So clay and organic matter increases CEC, which allows your soil to hold more uh, nutrient ions. So your humus is your habitat for your bugs. It's going to be filled with uh, bacteria and fungi, as well as nematodes, springtails, etc., all the little uh, animals that are down in your soil, earthworms. Um, that's good habitat for them, and you need those to transfer nutrients from the soil to the plants. Now, fungi and bacteria create uh, substances that will stick the soil particles together and create aggregates, which uh, instead of being compacted and hard, your soil will be loose and allow air and moisture to penetrate. Soils with good aggregation can absorb and hold a lot more water. So for every 1% increase, they say, in organic matter, the soil can hold another inch of water. So when you get a two inches of rain, we keep all the rain instead of it running off the surface. You want to absorb all the rain that you get. It's not the rain that you get in a summer. It's the rain that you keep in your soil that matters. So if it rains a couple inches and you don't get any rain for the next three weeks, like sometimes happens these days, it doesn't matter because you're going to store that two inches. And really, an inch of, uh, of rain is like having an extra truckload of water, you know, like a tanker truck. So organic matter should be at least 5%, and it can be as high as 12% in untouched, pristine prairie soils over by the Mississippi River. You know, the interesting thing about an organic matter map is that it matches almost identically where, where the biggest bucks in the United States exist. So if you were to look at a what they call a heat map with different colors, you can overlay that to Boone and Crockett scores and they match right up. That's how important it is when you're talking about deer food and habitat. So how do we get better organic matter levels? Well, what I often do is put complete compost down. Compost material that's been rotted down aerobically and it's been correctly handled and it's, it's down to as far as it's gonna go in the yard, okay? So uh, we happen to have a good compost facility in Center County where you can purchase this stuff. It's made of leaves and kitchen scraps from Penn State University. And it's pretty good stuff. Um, but the best way to, to improve organic matter is not to destroy it in the first place. I see many, many properties that somebody decide they want to make a food plot and they drop a a bulldozer off and 
bulldoze all all your organic matter off. And in the forest, you only have about an inch of, of what they call the O horizon, and then you have the A horizon, which has the humus in it. The O horizon is like <clears throat> half rotted down leaves and stuff that's not finished yet. And that stuff is all very, very important. It'd be better to till that in somehow. And we're going to get to that when we talk about clearing. But it's extremely important to preserve that little bit of dark organic matter layer in your forest soils when you clear food plots. So we can add compost and we can use cover crops to increase organic matter. I often use chicken bedding. Uh, when you use poultry house bedding, which is made up of, of uh, wood shavings, feathers and droppings from the chickens or the turkeys, that needs to be composted correctly. If it's not composted correctly, it's going to stink. And if it's, if it's done right, it should smell a little bit like peanuts. It kind of reminds you of peanuts. If it stinks, don't use it. Um, there's a danger of pathogens being in there. And you wouldn't want to take domestic turkey diseases and viruses and put them into your, your wild turkeys. So you need to be careful with it. So long term, we want to use minimal disturbance, no-till methods, keep a living root in the soil at all times so that the biology in the soil always has food because the plants are feeding the biology, the biology is feeding the plants in return. You want to use diverse plantings so that you have different size, shape, and depth of roots. And the very best way to increase your organic matter is to use livestock to terminate whatever your cover crop is to plant new. You want to graze that. Okay. Now, I often use cattle and horses to get my grass down and turned into manure. So it, it's something that nobody ever does and nobody talks about it. And when I bring it up, they think I'm crazy. But if deer aren't eating all of your forage and it starts to get lignified to where deer don't want it anymore, then it might be a good idea to put some animals on there. And there's nothing better for your organic matter and your soil health than grazing. And we can talk about that a little bit in your, uh, in your maintenance segment, okay? Another thing you can do is introduce biology to your soil. The soil, so the soil food web is important to get started and to maintain at all times. And you'll, you'll never have to worry about your pH or your fertility because your biology is going to take care of that for you. And again, use cover crop tactics to make a functional soil food web. All right. So that's it for organic matter for now. What they do is they mix it with wood chips and then let it cook down. A little skiff of it like that. I have enough phosphorus for about 10 years worth of growing crops. It adds a lot of uh, nitrogen, micro, micronutrients. Organic matter too, so it's a slow release nitrogen because it's tied up in that compost. There's something about chicken manure, I'm telling you. If you have a new food plot in the woods, see if you can find some and get it spread. Uh, this will be an acre and a half. We're going to put three tons on. So with the trucking, it's going to cost about $480 for this trip. Um, Sure beats buying fertilizer. The analysis is not really impressive on this material, but it's it's the availability that counts. And there's a lot of available nutrients. By the time you take a bunch of grain and run it through a chicken 
and then what they do is they get a they get the chicken manure with the bedding you can also get some lime mixed in but in this case I just didn't need it I already have a 6.8 pH up here so we put the cow calf pears in here and put some nice fertilizer down get everything mowed I don't have to spray for grass because the grass is gone and turned into manure I still have good clover coming as soon as we take the cows off we finally got some rain after having a summer of no rain yesterday I put down brassicas winter peas and some more soybeans we'll let the cows on here for a little longer we're expecting more rain and the cows will stomp the beans in and we'll get some rain beaten down on them to get them into seed soil contact and you can see how there's new stuff germinating already see that I think that's clover from the clover that went to seed And by having the cows in here grazing everything down, it creates a good uh, seed bed and a good environment for new stuff to get started. Mo. They like to hang out down in that corner, which is good. I got a tree stand down there. I put lots of seed right there, so they'll, they'll plant my seed for me. Here's what's left of the soybeans after the summer. The deer kept them pretty well chewed off. But we'll have new soybeans <clears throat> and peas and a lot of brassicas coming. By hunting season, that ought to be pretty good. Now some of the brassicas have an insect getting into them. It's a shot hole feeder and I don't know what it is, but it devastated my earlier seeding. If anybody knows what that might be, let me know. See how nice the clover is in this field. That was knee high in the spring. The cows kind of like that milkweed too. They chewed that off. So that's my secret weapon. 30 cows on five acres doesn't take them long to mow it now they think I have hay or something so they're gonna come running over here so I'm getting out of here you can imagine how all these hooves churn up the soil too and create a good seed bed why are you staring at me Beat it. 